Let's take a look at this dusty embryo. Welcome to SETI Astro. Well, this has to be easily the deepest I've ever gone in RGB. I, uh, I normally, as most of you know, I normally shoot a lot of narrowband, especially with what I consider some fairly light polluted skies. It's not too bad. It's like a, a Bortle six and a half. Uh, but uh, this is 300 three minute exposures in red. I took 200 three minute exposures in green and then 200 three minute exposures in blue. I, I took more red because I, I definitely noticed there was a lot more contrast and detail in the red, which I figured I could kind of double up as a, a pseudo luminance layer as well. Now this was interesting. When I did the RGB channel combination, running it through SPCC, I did use uh, a white balance of a G2V star. So that's that's like our sun. So all our solar companions out there would show white and then obviously anything cooler or hotter would be red and blue. Uh, and, and it does give a lot of that ruddy, dusty color out there, but it, it seemed like a lot to me. So I also did something that I, I know a lot of people do as well is just uh, do a linear fit. So doing the linear fit um, definitely took out a lot of that crazy amount of red and shows a lot more detail out in the outer skirts here. Uh, but you know, that's, I, I did like some of the red color. So what I ended up doing is I took uh, two thirds of the linear fit and one third of the SPCC and, and put them together to get a much more pleasing uh, color balance to me. So doing that um, kind of two thirds, one third merger and removing the stars uh, left me kind of a, a much more pleasing, more natural dusty look to my mind. Um, and if we run like an SDF, we could see the, the outside still kind of has um, a lot of that nebulosity out there. And, and the color just, just looked a lot better looked a lot better to me. I also took 52 15 minute exposures in hydrogen because I know there's a lot of stellar nurseries in here that should showcase some some hydrogen pretty well and uh, I wanted to do a nice continuum subtraction with all the really good red data that I had so you know a, a fairly deep exposure here in in hydrogen. Doing continuum subtraction I use my Continuum Subtract Utility tool. I do know Night Photons now has his own um, automated script for Continuum Subtraction as well. I'll have to do a, a separate video kind of comparing those two. His tool is, is quite superb as, as well. Uh, but here's the Continuum Subtracted data for hydrogen. If I run like an STF on it, you can see that there is some hydrogen nebulosity out there. Uh, not not a whole, whole lot, right? It's just pretty much interstellar dust, so I wasn't expecting much. But down in the stellar nurseries here, it, it is where I was expecting some more hydrogen, and it was, it was good to see that there. Also, there was this structure here that's not a star. It, it, it doesn't show up when you um, look at the star. So that, that, that is a nice bright hydrogen object that, that is poking through there. Now this was uh, my image prior to adding back in the hydrogen data. And now this is it with the hydrogen data added back in. You know, it, it really just boosted the, the reds in these stellar nursery regions, which I was hoping for. And then this, this other little object is really shining through here in hydrogen as well. So quite the contrast between like fire and ice in the embryo nebula here, it's, it's just a really interesting, really interesting object. And then finishing off, uh, removing a couple little blemishes and trying to tame the brightness and the reflection nebulas down a little bit, added a little additional contrast out into the, the outer regions, really left me with my final starless image. I'm very happy with this. This is the first time I've ever imaged this kind of dust before. So it was, it was quite a new experience for me to process it. The stars were super easy. I just uh, used the ones that were in the linear fit image and uh, did my star stretch on them and they 
they look good. They're, they're great stars. I, I do love that the Newt makes good stars versus my uh, Acro. And now all combined is my beautiful dusty embryo here. And just some of these objects are really interesting. Like there's these little, there's this little bubble of hydrogen nebulosity down here off that dark arm. There's other structures kind of peeking through the, the clouds as well. Uh, so, you know, let's let's go ahead and I, I just want to show you the, the breadth of some of the cool objects in here. I'll pull up what's in my image. And, and just to do a, a little showcase, let's go into the advanced search. And I'm going to go down to her big hero objects. HH objects. And that's all we're going to look at here. And this is the most HH objects I've ever seen in any object in, in one go. J just look at them all. <laughs> I mean, most of them you can't see. They're, they're behind the dust, right? Uh, but a lot of them are, are there just fine to, to be visible. You know, all, these, all this cool like tendril thing coming out. Most of those are HH objects. There is this kind of structure that was peeking through. That's an HH object. There is this one here with that long streamer coming off it. I, I think it's just listed as HH objects in different catalogs, but that that's one. You know, this is another one. It, it just it just kind of was blowing my mind that all this stuff was was there. Another interesting one are, are young stellar objects. So now if we add those in the mix, you can see how dense this is getting. This this whole area is just one giant stellar nursery in, in this big dust cloud. So maybe embryo nebula is very fitting. It It is a stellar nursery and it's birthing a lot of new stars. And uh, really cool as well is, is a maser. So, I mean, normally you don't see anything for those um, just because you know, they're far away and kind of exotic objects. But most of them are hidden behind the, the dark nebula. But this one in particular, you could actually see right there. It's that little tiny dot. So quite the cool, interesting object. I had never imaged this thing before. It, it just, it, it blew me away. I am so glad I spent the time and went really deep at least deep for me in RGB on it to capture all that dust. I've updated Astrobin with my dusty embryo. Uh, it has both the starry and starless versions. I have all my acquisition details uh, a write up. I did take some uh, cool collages. So here's all the Herbig Hero objects. You can go through and, and look at them all and where they're at. The dust field is so dense there's only three galaxies visible at all through the dust and and i have them listed here i have that little uh maser location listed and then these other two close in areas that i just found super intriguing so definitely go to astroband take a look download this herbig harrow collage I, I i think it's just really really nifty i've also updated setiastro.com under nebula here's my dusty embryo it does have mouse over zoomable images. You can click the image to get the full resolution as well. I have the Herbig Hero object collage. You can click and download and the Starless. Well, I hope everybody's having some clear skies out there. If you're a channel member, the master lights for this will be available to download. Please comment, like, and subscribe.